All right, so uh, switching over tangibly to Facebook. Uh, Facebook has personal pages and business, or sorry, personal profiles and business pages. And I mentioned this uh, on a previous week as well, the terminology of profile versus page. And it's going to be similar on most of the networks that have this. Not every network has it. Twitter, you just create an account, and it's either the personal or the business. But uh, definitely Facebook and others have uh, personal versus business pages. Uh, you can use a personal profile to create one or more business pages. You can set more than one manager. You can set additional managers to help you run a page. So uh, I create the account in my personal, using my personal email, for example, of a client. And then I add the client to have access to their Facebook account. So then now I uh, can post on their Facebook as well as the client. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see how to do that exactly, of course. So when you create a new Facebook page, you have a bad URL. So you want to claim your good URL right away. We'll talk how to do that, of course, right away. So the example here is when you create a brand new account on Facebook for your business, you're going to have some sort of address that looks something like this. Something like that. Facebook.com page and then kind of your name, but then a bunch of numbers and gibberish. That's the bad URL, meaning it doesn't look on a good. It doesn't look good on a business card. I can't tell people, "Hey, visit my website, Facebook.com/page/victors-bakery-872947." Right? You're not. You're never going to be able to tell people about your page that way. The good one is simply that it's just shorter and accurate. Victor's Bakery, something like that. You don't get this one right away you have to claim it I'll show you how to claim it in a moment but I see that so many times that when if a client hires us uh, and then step one is like let's go claim your real your short your vanity address like that right away and hopefully someone else didn't already and that happens a lot on these networks especially these that are more than a decade old uh, we've had a family business for 30 years and we just got the great idea to get on Facebook this week well, Facebook's been around over 10 years. Twitter's been around over 10 years. A lot of these networks have been around a decade. And uh, you may be surprised that there's a Victor's Bakery in New York and Manila and Moscow, both in Russia and Idaho. And now I'm trying to create Victor's Bakery here in San Diego. Well, the name got taken, so I might have to go with Victor's Bakery San Diego. Uh, maybe it's too long, so I want Victor's Bakery SD. But does that mean San Diego or South Dakota? So this is the issue with, uh, with names on social media. And I said this before, and I'll say it again. Even if you don't you plan to use a network, it's a good idea to claim your name on it, just in case. You may actually then decide to, after we look at it here, maybe you never thought about using Pinterest for your business. And after we look at it and use it and you like how it works and you feel comfortable in it and feel you, found, you find a target audience, maybe you start using Pinterest. Um, people often ask, you know, what's the best network to be on? And I say, well, the short answer is Facebook. The long answer is all of them because you don't know what, where your audience is exactly. And even though I keep saying everyone's on Facebook, yes, but I also said perhaps younger people are moving away from Facebook. Perhaps they're moving over to Snapchat or Twitter or Instagram. Perhaps your audience uh, congregates, congregates more on Google+. 
so uh, using these networks like a little bit, taking little samplers from all of them could also help you figure out your audience. Question? Why do you know that uh, younger people are moving toward because um, Facebook's lame, man. <laughs> no, uh, it, it's because when things, uh, you know, younger people are often uh, looking for uh, their own privacy, social groups, and that sort of thing. When, yeah, your, your, your mom, your dad, your aunts and uncles are on it, and I don't want to be where, where they are. I want to have my own space. And that happens on, on all of the networks to some degree. For a long time, it was that younger people were on Facebook because, again, it started off as a college-only network, and they went off to other high schools and such, and then it opened to the public, and then now well, everyone's on it, and businesses are on it. And, you know, young people being fickle, they want to be at a place unique to them, so there's other networks to take up that, that space. So... Let's go to uh, Facebook.com, and again, we can, um, if you would like, you can do the things I'm about to show you here, or you can do this at home at your own computer if you don't remember your password and such. Um, these computers erase themselves once they get turned off, so whatever you sign in with will will be deleted. Now, uh, the first stumbling block that people often have is right here in that, okay, I'm going to create a brand new account for Victor's Bakery, my business. So I'm going to fill it in right here. Victor's Bakery, phone number, birthday, I guess when I founded the business two years ago. That's the first problem here. You're not going to create your business account here. This is to create a personal account, a personal profile. And as I said, a personal profile can then create one or more business pages. So this should not be filled out as your business. And I get people coming in all the time that do it this way, and th they've been doing it wrong, and it can be converted from one to the other, which I'll cover in a little bit. Yes? Or if you already have a personal uh, Facebook page, is that... Just if you have a personal Facebook profile, we can use it. Uh, to then create, I don't want that to be connected anyway. Uh -huh. So it's not going to be connected um, in terms of look at my use case scenario. I use my personal Facebook page to create ten clients' accounts. My personal stuff better not be connected with the client's stuff, and it's not. So we have a couple of options. You could use your existing personal to then create the business pages, but they will not be linked. My stuff will not show up on their pages, and vice versa. Or you could have a completely unique email address that you use for the business. But you still have to create this as a person first. So I'll put that in the notes here. Um, two ways. Use your existing personal profile to then create your business page, they will not be linked, or create a, or, or use a different email account to then create a personal page, or profile, then create business page. Question? Uh, the emails should be different though, from the personal profile if I'm doing the new one and the business page? Yes, you cannot reuse the same email. Okay. If you try to create a new account with the same email, it'll say you already have an account. So you'll have to use a new email. You can get you know a free one at, at uh, Google, uh, Gmail, Hotmail, whatever. Uh, but one email is necessary to create an account, which then we can create multiple business pages. So people always ask that as well. Uh, do I use my personal email address or do I use my business's email address? It's completely up to you. You just need some email address to either create the account or to log into, and then you can create business pages. 
and they will not be linked. Uh, if you think about it, they should not be linked. Uh, I don't want my personal uh, photos, cat photos, to show up on the client's pages, and vice versa. I don't want the client's stuff to show up on my on my page, on my personal profile. That is okay. So here. Um, you uh, you want you you want to either create an account or sign in. I'm going to sign in, and again I'm going to sign in with a personal account, and then I'll show you how it works to then work with the business pages. Okay, so full disclosure, I hate Facebook for, for personal purposes. I don't like how intrusive it is. I don't like the people that run the company. I don't like, perhaps, their hand in the election and all of that. I don't like Facebook as a person. But I love Facebook as a business. I love it. It's the best thing out there for a business. Strike one. Facebook is already popping up. Would you like us to send you notifications for whatever someone has for lunch? No. So on the personal note, strike two, if you change your mind, click here. I said no. Um, again, for personal, I think it's way too intrusive. Uh, it's constantly popping up and bothering you about this and that. And here's your password. Would you like us to remember your password? No. I say that every time. It asks every time. For personal, I think it's way too intrusive and annoying. But for business, again, I love it because it will uh, be a great marketing tool for your business. So on personal, I hardly log in and, and look at what people are sharing and, and chat with people. Full disclosure, my favorite network is Google+. I feel I've connected with a lot of interesting people with a lot of interesting topics on Google+. Second used to be Twitter, not as much anymore. And Facebook is like 10th place, my favorite network. But for business, it's amazing. Question. Those notifications, they, uh, they go to your email, correct? That one that just popped up was, go was going to be one that was popping up in the web browser. There's another one that you also get in your email. That I turn that off. I'm getting them. Uh, one exactly. Strike three right there, right? So how to turn those off, we'll see that in a moment in the settings. Uh, so the first thing that I see here when I log in, I logged in as the person, the personal profile, Victor. And so I see all of the stuff about my friends and family. Uh, they all show up here. And then I can start to say, what's on my mind, and share onto Facebook so that it can further gather information about me. Well, again, we want to use this as a business. And you probably don't have this yet. But if you notice, on the top right corner, there's a little black triangle, which I'm sure has some official name. When I click on that, in my case, it says, these are your pages. These are the pages of businesses that I help manage. As I said before, I teach this stuff, but I'm also part of a company that we get hired to run social media or make websites and all of that. So I'm showing you uh, things that we would do for real clients. So in my case, I have here these other clients' accounts that I can help manage. They might also show up here next to friends. If you don't have that, uh, I'll show you how to set that up in just a moment. But you see here, this is the idea that I've got my personal account that I logged into for my friends and family. And then I have access to all of these other clients that then I can go in and um, use their page to post a job listing or what's on sale and and all of that so that's the idea of, uh, of Facebook in terms of I've got a personal account then I manage my business account the way this gets set up is the first time uh, on the little triangle we have here create a page so just for practice, perhaps, even if you've already got a page, uh, for practice, perhaps follow along here in creating a page to see how that works. And then I'll show you, you know, how to use Facebook. And then you can apply it to your real account. Yes? What is that for next to the interactive? 
there are four notifications on this particular page. What's that? It's another strike. No, I, I do need to know that. I do need to know who's interacting with me. A lot of this is Facebook saying, hey. You haven't logged in recently. Yeah. yeah. Who's these guys? Yeah. So these, these notifications up here are for my personal page. There's like five people are trying to chat with me. And then uh, up on the little number over here at a glance, I also see here, well, there's four notifications, which it'll be like people are replying to your posts, or maybe Facebook is just telling you you haven't posted in a while. It's just notifying you of something, which we can see in a moment. So uh, I'm going to click the triangle. I'm going to click Create a Page. We have business or brand, community or public figure. Now here's, uh, what are we on, strike five. Um, Facebook interface changes often. Uh, this procedure, I'm already seeing it's slightly different than the last time I taught this, just like you know three months ago, the last time I taught this class, part one of the class. Um, so. If you've used Facebook for a while, you, you see that things change, and then people get upset, and then they're angry for two days, and then it's business as usual. But for us as a business, it, it is annoying because we're trying to run a business, and the interface changes. And where's that button again for me to reply to my, to my customer? Well, it's on the top left now instead of the bottom right. So uh, Facebook has a blog as well that keeps you up to date with itself. And it's probably at blog.facebook.com. A lot of websites nowadays have that link, blog.whatever.com. Apparently, it's newsroom.fb.com, but it took me to it even if I misspelled it. So you can just make a note, blog.facebook.com. That's the official blog from Facebook, the official party line. So... Um, Okay, uh, connect your business, yourself, or your cause to the worldwide community of people on Facebook. The great thing about Facebook is you can create a page just about anything. Not just my business, but my nonprofit organization, my community group, my HOA, my, um, you know, my rock band, uh, my pet. I can create Facebook pages about anything, as long as it follows the rules of what's appropriate on Facebook and that's the thing that no one reads but everyone agrees to every time you log in you know it's the usual things about no hate speech no harassment and bullying that sort of thing so most of us will probably not do any of that so we're fine we have a business or we have some sort of community showcase your products services etc or connect and share with people so for the purposes of the class whichever one will be fine but I'll go with business business or brand, page name, and category. So here's the part where if I type Victor's Bakery, this is different than the web address, which we will see on subsequent pages. Question? You had a 501c3 with the, like this STEM group. Would they be business or would they go with community or public? Probably community because it says over here connect and share uh, regarding organizations, groups, and clubs. And this can be changed. Pretty much everything we do, if we do it wrong, can be changed at, at a later point. All right. So this uh, this name right here is uh, the name of your business, and it's related to your web address, but it it is not exactly your web address. Again, after I create this, I'm probably going to have something that says facebook.com slash pages slash victors dash bakery dash blah blah blah. We will set our correct address a little later. But this page right here is not unique. This page name that I write here, you know, I can call it San Diego City College. And it'll say, great, welcome. This is not, on this screen right here, it's not unique. On a subsequent screen, that's where we can... Uh, claim our unique name. So that's a little confusing here. Question? Yeah. Can, can you create a business and a community with the same name? And what, yes. And how, how do they act differently? They're going to have different features by going to either a page or a, I mean a business or a, a brand or a community. They're going to have different features. 
Um, I, I cannot quite tell you which is better depending on I need to know more about your particular needs but they can be changed if you put it into the wrong one and the idea is that it has different features you might be able to create certain kinds of posts in one as opposed to the other but you could create a one as a business and as a community they will both allow you to pick the same name but then their addresses will be different. One might say facebook.com slash pages, Victor's Bakery 123, and the other one says uh, facebook.com communities slash Victor's Bakery 177. So they'll have different addresses, but their visible page names will be the same. Okay, categories. So oftentimes you'll have a little info icon, type a word or two to best describe your page, then choose a suggested category. So Victor's Bakery is all about uh, cookies and baked goods and birthday cakes or whatever so in general that's that sounds to me like a bakery so as I start typing a general keyword of what my business is it'll pop up to their recognized keywords and there's millions of them so you'll probably find your particular keyword in there somewhere um, this is one of the things that has changed in the, in the version that I taught just three months ago, it already had a list of possibilities. Here, I don't quite like it in terms of it, well, you type a couple of things and then we'll suggest something for you. I like the other organization where it was more of, um, here's some big categories and maybe pick this one and you get suggested that one. So in any event, I'll choose bakery. And this business, yeah, it's going to be a bakery, not a wholesale. Maybe we're a dessert shop. What's the difference between bakery and dessert shop? It depends on the business. So I'll just go with bakery. I'll pick bakery. We've got an address but then it's got don't show my address and this again is the issue regarding uh, okay well I'm a web designer and I and I work out of my out of my house I go visit people at their locations or I talk to them on the phone I don't want to put my home address here um, this I believe is going to be different depending on the category you chose let me try over here web designer no, it's still saying address and such. Let me see, can I put one, two, three, fake street, San Diego, 91919, phone number optional, and don't show my address. It might let me, but if you're especially a business at a physical location, of course you want to put your real address there, because then it'll put you on the map, on the Facebook map, for the, for people to get driving directions to go to your business. As a web designer, I don't want to put my real home address. I'm going to see if it's going to let me, but probably if it doesn't let me put a fake address, this is strike six. Well, I don't want my real address there, but I have to put it to proceed. And that's the problem, not just with Facebook, but with all the networks in terms of, if you want to play in our playground, you've got to follow our rules. If you break the rules of the playground, you can't play in the playground. And the problem with that is I'm going to put one, two, three, fake street. And maybe right now it accepts it, but then later on someone double checks it and like, this is fake, they're a spammer, <coughs> they're a hacker, we boot them out. And sometimes there's very little recourse to say, hey, wait a minute, well, I, I just don't want to put my address, can I talk to a real person? You know, sometimes these things are so monolithic, you can't really deal with a real person and it's just guilty until proven innocent. So I'm going to give it a shot here as um, a fake address. Phone number is optional, but obviously you want to put a phone number if you do want people to contact you. So I'll continue. Okay. So it says, add a profile, profile picture. Help people find your page by adding a photo. Well, this is just like Twitter and every other network. I want to add a photo of my logo right here to identify myself, my business. And we saw over at the NYU style guide, it said, you know, check out our visual style guide and make sure you follow it. So that probably said things again like, 
make sure the photos are always shot in front of the library and make sure the person is always facing left. You want to be consistent with these graphics. I don't have a photo to upload, so I'll skip it. And I don't have a cover photo at the moment. But that's a wide photo that can show off your, your business a little more. Skip that. So then we get this, um, we might get like some pop-ups that kind of help you uh, improve the page a bit. Uh, one of these things that, that comes up here, uh, invite your friends. Attract new visitors and build your audience by inviting friends. Um, so I can say here, the power of friends of friends on Facebook. As your friends and family like, reply, follow, interact with your page, you could get more people doing the same because of friends of friends. I'm not connected to, uh, to Janet, but I'm connected to Jill. And so Jill likes my page. Facebook could let Janet know that Jill liked my page. So then I get the connection from Janet that then she could like my page. Uh, this again, as a personal thing, I think is intrusive, but as a business thing, I love it. I want more people to know about my business. I love that Jill liked my page, and now Facebook is telling Janet, you might also like that page because Jill liked it, and you're Jill's friend. So I like that. I like that it could connect with more people as a business. So that's a, that's an, that's an optional thing here, but it says, okay, here's a list of, uh, of your friends. Uh, and all your friends are over here too and what you can easily then do is click invite invite and Facebook will send a message um, at the minimum in Facebook but probably also via email unless they change their settings we'll get a message that says okay uh, you're being invited to like Victor's bakery uh, you're, you're getting a like you're getting invite invited to like Victor's bakery and then they may or may not and then you figure out who your friends really are <laughs> so the value of this again is not just an ego boost but the value of this is that uh, well there might be a friend connected to High Road that might like Victor's Bakery and so they get made aware of it so that could have a value pros and cons of this pros could help you reach more customers. And again, I use the keywords over and over, product, customer, business, all of that. But this applies to everything, uh, your uh, nonprofits and all of that. So it could help you reach more, more customers. Cons, do you want to build your business on the backs of your friends and family? Uh, I'm selling birthday cakes and whatever in my bakery and uh, I have friends and family and they have kids and they'd love birthday cakes but are they going to uh, buy my birthday cake are they gonna expect a friend discount um, is it gonna be valuable for me to invite people on something that they really don't quite have an interest on uh, it is important, like I've said, like over at Twitter, yeah, we want to keep getting followers, more and more people. But do we really want our friends and family as followers? No offense to them. Of course, they're lovely people. But do we want friends and family to be our customers? Will they be our customers? Is it sustainable and such? Usually, we are going to be reaching out to brand new people. So there is some value to simply inviting all 500 of my friends. But again, don't be surprised or offended if you only get seven likes out of those 500 because we're going to talk about the other and the better uh, goals and topics of reaching new customers, not your existing friends and family. I'm going to close that. 
And so I get a very barren page. I didn't put my logo here. I didn't put my cover image. It's very barren. My address at the moment is this, Victor's Bakery dash gibberish. Uh, so to-do list. And this is on all the networks, but to-do list. Claim your URL, also known as a username. Set your um, logo and cover image. Fill in your about info or the, the biographical stuff. And once I've set all of those up, I'm ready to start to get followers, right? Remember in Twitter, I also said, after you do this, you need something else? Content. So post one to three things. So on all of the networks, you want to do this at the most basic minimum. You have your name set up. You have your, your graphical assets set up. You have your text assets. And you have something to show people to convince them why would they follow you? Why would they like your page? Why would they care? OK, the first one, how to do the claim your URL. It should be right over here. Underneath your logo, here's the name of my business, the one that is not unique. I could have created a page right now called San Diego City College. It would have let me, and then I would have had Facebook.com, San Diego City College dash gibberish. Right here under Create Page Username, that's where you create your custom address. It's easier for people to find your page and search when it has a unique username. Pages with usernames can also create <coughs> custom URLs that let people quickly visit and message. So that's that's up here. I'm about to claim what is going to happen up here. Facebook.com slash you know, Victor's Bakery. Right here. So I want the name. I have 50 characters. So if I'm trying to type Victor's Bakery, username isn't available. It has characters that aren't allowed. It should tell you that the characters that are not allowed are, for example, spaces and just about any punctuation. So if I remove that space, character is not allowed. OK, so no, basically no spaces, no special characters. I think dashes are OK. Uh, no, dashes are not OK. Underscores are not OK. Dots are OK. Victor's dot bakery. But what it's also saying is this username isn't available. So just out of curiosity here, facebook.com slash victors dot bakery. Who is that? Not quite. Those those posts were from 2017, but they're in Hong Kong. So Victor's Bakery in Hong Kong, always open. Okay, and there's their email there. Okay, so uh, I cannot do Victor's Bakery. Okay, um, and I cannot do Victor's Bakery. Let's see whose Victor's Bakery is there. They got both names. Okay. So this is the part again. Okay, well, I guess I'll have to be Victor's Bakery SD. That one seems okay. What, what was the URL you typed to get into the screen then? To check the other to check the other Victor's Bakery? Yeah. No, to get into the screen to claim the claim the name. You click on the icon right there, create page username. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I could do Victor's Bakery SD, but then does that mean South Dakota, uh, San Diego, South Darwin? So um, I could spell it out. And that one seems to be fine. So I, I won't actually claim this name. I don't want to take it from someone else. I don't actually have Victor's Bakery 
company. I'm just, I just use it as an example in my classes. But this is one of the first steps on your Facebook account. You want to claim this name because then it will uh, create your short address. So it looks good on a business card, so it looks professional, and so that people can find you easier. Okay, set your logo and cover. Again, I can't do that right now, but I would upload a square graphic or a rectangular graphic there. You can get inspiration again from other people's accounts. Now, this changes all the time, uh, but sometimes if you're not able to claim a username, uh, it could be that you don't have enough likes, so they don't quite see you as legitimate yet. Now, I've used Facebook as a, as a professional thing for years, so it looks like it will automatically let me do it right away. But perhaps for a lot of us that don't have this uh, usage of it, it, you might have to have some amount of likes to first qualify. And I've seen it between 20 and 35 likes, so I can't exactly say. So that's another reason why, hey friends, like my page so that I can get enough likes to at least claim my name. So I'll put that in the notes here. but it, might be you don't have enough likes or it's too new. Might not be able to claim because your page is too new or don't have enough likes, aka followers. And then somewhat really, I don't want to distract too much, but uh, mm -hmm. so I, yeah, I started one with my business email. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a dummy account, and then I started with the thing. I'm realizing now it kind of complicates it. I probably should just use my personal one. I had a customer like reach out and friend me, though, you know, so it's mm -hmm. like. Um, Th that's, that's part of the, the problem that people friend each other, but customers or, or clients don't friend a page, they like a page. Yeah where they follow a page. So uh, this is the issue about their whole terms of service thing. Somewhere in there, basically, it says, you're going to use a personal page for personal things. You're going to use a business page for business things. So technically, if you create a business page as a personal page, you're, you're, you're going against their terms of service. Technically, you could get shut down. So I would try to fix that as early as possible. You've got that one friend, but you could guide them, hey, this should be my proper address like me here. It wasn't that. I think they just looked up my name on there or something, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, I'm wondering if the algorithm's going to connect it or like recommend me as a friend of people that are following my page or something like that. I doubt it would. But... I doubt it would, and it shouldn't because, again, uh, each one has its own purpose. Now, uh, sometimes also, you know, if I'm talking about Victor's Bakery, well, my name is in the business, so there's sort of a link there. But if I had you know, amazing, amazing San Diego cakes. If that was the name of my business and my name is not on it, there should not be the connection of Victor to San Diego amazing cakes. Okay. And then uh, I guess my, my real question though is like, uh, you know, as far as like, leaving a business page and says you have to wait for the Yeah. I mean, there's no way around that. No, that's, um, I think that's kind of a good thing. Uh, you cannot delete things instantaneously. Because you might change your mind. You might find, well, actually, there is some value. Maybe I won't use it, but I just I won't delete it. So there is a waiting period on most of these networks that things do not get deleted right away. For businesses, I believe it's two weeks. For people, I think it's like 90 days. So uh, at some amount of time, it's going to e erase itself. Yeah. I'm wondering if since my personal profile has a history of using Facebook, then it would be more likely to cooperate with my profile. Possibly, yeah. Exactly. When things are brand new, because there's a problem with spam. There's a problem of companies, you know, fly-by-night companies creating accounts to rip people off. So they have to be, again, guilty until proven innocent, but it makes sense sometimes. So perhaps if you're using an account that already is established to create another account, that might give you benefits a little faster. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, fill in your about info. Um, I've got this brand new page that doesn't really explain what it's about. Well, it's obvious. It's a bakery. But some of us that perhaps have more esoteric names, we need to explain ourselves what our business is. Does anyone know what esoteric means? Esoteric means no one knows what it means. So, uh, 
to set ourselves up here, um, in my case, if I look at see more, it opens up to then have about. Uh, this can be rearranged so that these little buttons here are, are however you want them to be, but the default seems to be that about is hidden. Uh, so if you click on that see more, uh, we should be able to click about. And then here's a whole bunch of little boxes that I would recommend to fill in as many of them as possible as you're able to that makes sense for you. Uh, here's the place where I can change it. Actually, I didn't want in this category. I wanted another category. There's where you can change it. Uh, username is also right here. I want to change the, the address of my, of my uh, Facebook. It's right there. I want to change the name of it. Again, I could click right now to change this so that it says San Diego City College right there. But then the address is username, which is right there. Other details of the business. Edit business details. Again, you can look at these on your own. Um, what's your price range of products? Fill that in. Uh, when did the business start? There's actually two sort of dates here that they're kind of weird um, starting dates but that could be valuable what's our business type they sell we sell goods and services online and we represent a corporate headquarters so again it depends on each person I'm not going to go through all of them if you have individual questions I can kind of help you individually most of them make sense let me add my email so people can contact me I want to add other accounts that I'm on. Maybe I'm not just on, on, on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram. I'm also on Snapchat, on Twitch. So I can link my other uh, social networks to this one <coughs> to kind of cross-promote. Here's some more info. Uh, the about the impressum that one people always what's an impressum most of us don't need to care about this this is something for Austria Germany and Switzerland this is sort of like a truth in advertising sort of thing it doesn't matter to us here you can fill it out if you want uh, but you don't really need this impressum let me say also on the on the why these are boxes for you to fill in keywords which help you get found. Basically, SEO. What's SEO? Search engine. Search engine optimization. So SEO search engine optimization. The art science and magic of getting found <coughs> getting found by the search engines such as Google and Yahoo and Bing and Ask Jeeves and all of that um, I teach a class on that it's gonna come up on on Friday in a few you know probably in two months after the end of this course this course is three months then if you still have a Friday open, the month after that is a new course, SEO. And we cover there more of getting found on social uh, on, on search engines. I, I go to Google and I type in, uh, you know, uh, Italian food restaurant. Well, I want my Italian food restaurant to appear number one or on page one. Right now I'm, page, I'm on page 12. No one visits on page 12. I want to get on page one. That's SEO. So... The social networks also have some poll to help you get found on a Google search, etc., uh, by filling these boxes in, by putting in in the about information. If I only put in here, okay, Victor's Bakery, I'm going to put in San Diego Bakery. That's not great. I have so much space, 255. Bytes. So that's interesting that it's in bytes, not characters, which is 255 bytes is actually a lot. Um, but you have all of the space to fill in um, 
a bunch of keywords in the form of sentences, complete sentences, to help you get found. We are a family-owned bakery founded in 1989, specializing specializing in um, kid-friendly, um, organic, um, baked goods. You can feel your wallet can feel good about. And then I have up to that extra space. I'm not just filling in a bunch of keywords. Organic, comma, cookie, comma, San Diego, comma. I'm filling in real sentences, which have my keywords. Family, bakery, kid-friendly, organic. And I'm writing it in proper sentences and such. Uh, in the SEO class, I go into much more detail about this. But this is important to always work on on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest, all of these networks have some space for you to write a little bit of biographical info. It can be the same thing on all platforms, that's fine. Or it may be a little bit different on different platforms just to try to reach more people. So, saying this here, bad and good. Very short descriptions, squandering your space. Use as much space as they give you to fill in a bunch of keywords and concepts to help you get found. We'll look at one more thing, then we'll take a break. Uh, before this posting, Actually, so I'll add it before. Um, review your settings. By default, a lot of these networks, their settings are a little bit <coughs> are a little bit too perhaps open or a little too. It doesn't know exactly how you would prefer to use the network. So, for example, a lot of them have it set up that you will get an email every time someone likes your photo. You'll get an email every time someone follows you. Maybe you're getting too many emails. Maybe the settings are uh, people can contact you 24 hours a day. I only want them between working hours. So let's review our settings so that you can pick the best ones for yourself. Uh, that's going to be found over here. You've got a row of uh, a row of buttons and on the top right you should see settings. If you don't see settings you're probably on your personal account over here somewhere. You need to be make sure that you're on your actual business page. Remember now once you've created your business page you can switch to it by clicking on the uh, little black triangle on the top right. So let's look at settings briefly. There's a lot of settings here. Again, I'm not going to go through them all. I might mention a couple. But uh, you've got general notifications. I'm getting too many emails. You might want to look under notifications. Uh, looking at here again, who can view my page, age restrictions, and such. So you should browse these yourself. Uh, you're not going to break anything really. You just can look at it, and on most of these, there'll be kind of like a little question mark. Well, what does it actually mean? What does it do? What I do want to say uh, first here, definitely, in in the general tab on the second item, visitor posts. It says anyone can publish to the page. Anyone can add photos and videos to the page. By default, anyone can go to your Facebook page and trash you or praise you. That's what that is saying there. Anyone that finds my page can comment, can add to my, to my page. For some of us, that sounds horrifying. For others, like, yeah, I want people to 
uh, to say what they want. So if you click on edit here, you have these options. Disable posts. I don't want other people to write nasty stuff here. I, I want to keep it under my control. And the default is not that. It is that allow visitors, anyone that visits your page, can write something on your page. Well, probably you think, well, of course I want it on disable, or I don't want any uh, crazy person to write any crazy thing on my site. Well, before you do that, I do want to say that there are, in my opinion, a couple of styles of social media. Two styles of social media. There's the monologue, and there's the dialogue. So, monologue. Uh, what does the root word mono mean? One or single monologue, single voice, one way communication. Dialogue, what would you say dialogue means? Two way, multiple communication, multi way communication. So you can run social media in either of these ways. They're both valid. I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm going to give you an opinion of one, what, one, why, of why one might be better than the other, but one is not inherently better or worse. Monologue is you post on the networks and don't reply to, to users. You don't engage with users, you know, followers, etc. You only speak to the users. Which is that? Coca-Cola, oh. McDonald's, the huge companies that don't need to do that customer service. <laughs> so. In turn, do they have a contact us or something? Yeah, it's a contact us that goes straight to the recycle bin because. <laughs> Because unless it's a huge thing that appeared in the newspaper, those big companies don't have any incentive to do customer service. They're so big, they're too big to fail, they don't care if you had a bad experience. They don't care if you put seven pictures of that tooth that they found in your hamburger. Uh, they're that big. For us, we're not that big. So the recommendation for us is the dialogue. You do, you, you post and reply and follow up and engage every quote unquote user you speak with your users so you engage in customer service Uh, I think a lot of uh, a lot of us perhaps we do this on accident, and then now as I'm explaining it, I, I hope you don't do the monologue. I hope you don't just say, "Okay, well, if the teacher says I need to post one, <coughs> once a week on my networks, that's what I'll do. I'll post a great picture every week." But you're not replying to people. You're not following up. You're not doing the social in social media. You're engaged in the monologue, and. For most of us smaller businesses, that's not the best way. Customer service, that personal touch, is what really helps. Not just in the real world, in the digital world. If I've got, you know, a real pizza shop, real, uh, I, I want people to come in. I want to talk to them. How was your day? Have a slice, and you know, have them in in the dialogue. I want them to come back to my pizza shop. Why would I not also be like that online? Why would I not also? Uh, interact with people more directly then the people will see you that you're not just you know dots on the screen you're also a company a person a business owner a real person so most of us cannot afford to really be in the monologue state of things that goes back to the setting right here which one do you think is monologue which one do you think is dialogue monologue is disable posts Dialogue is allowed, but I don't want any crazy person to write any crazy thing on my page. You further have options right here. Review posts by others before they're published to your page. 
And that's off by default. I think this is one of the dumbest things here, strike 12, that this should be on. I want people to dialogue with me, but I want to approve that it appears there first before everyone else sees it. So I would recommend turn that one on. I would recommend leave the first one on, allow visitors to post on your page, but nothing will appear until you approve it. And you approve all of that over on the, um, the inbox. You'll get a notification that says, someone posted to your page. Click here to moderate it or approve it. And you'll see it in the inbox, basically. Um, maybe publishing tools. But you'll see it on screen, and you can allow it to appear. You can delete it and not let it appear. You can report it, you know, if they're being harass, harass, harassful and such. Um, you can you can manage your message. One of the things that I really like about Facebook for a business is that you can manage your message a lot better. Can you edit it? Uh, possibly. At the very least, I know you can approve it or deny it. I have to double check if you can edit it. I would be careful about that, though, because, you know, am I going to change it to say your someone wrote your restaurant was good? Am I going to change it to say your restaurant was great? That's what I wondered with the possibility. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. You can't. Uh, that would be a little, little too manipulative. But at the very least, we can allow what appears and what doesn't. So what I what is about to say here that um, Facebook is great for controlling your message, staying on topic. Twitter is terrible for controlling your message, staying on topic. On, uh, on Twitter, I want to start a hashtag and have everyone communicate and be a community about uh, my business. So I'll create a hashtag, you know, hashtag Victor's Bakery Yum. And I want people to use that hashtag and share pictures of, of my birthday cakes and how amazing they are and all of that. It just takes one person to post a photo of the birthday cake ended up smushed and Johnny's birthday got ruined. Well, then it goes viral and then now everyone knows Victor's Bakery has terrible cakes. Well, on Facebook, I have much more control of that. Someone can take that photo of that one-time fluke that the, that the cake was upside down and then post it on my Facebook page, and then I'll delete it. And then I'll keep the message positive and on track. And yes, then people ask, well, isn't that fake? Aren't I just controlling it way too much? Yes, that's fine. It's my business. I'm going to put the best foot forward on my business, on my property. Am I going to put myself down in my own ad in the newspaper? Am I going to put myself down in my own newspaper ad? Well, then why would I put myself down in my own Facebook? People can take out their own full page ad and trash me. People can put their own billboard and trash me. People can pay the person on the corner to flip that sign to trash me. But on my own business, on my own property, you're not going to do that. So on Facebook, it's the same thing. It's perfectly fine to control your message um, on your own page and I have no judgment if you completely control it even though you know you don't have a great product but you're gonna keep only the best reviews I'm not gonna judge that but uh, you have the ability on Facebook to really control your message and it's it, it not on Twitter it could get away from you very easily that's another positive here for Facebook <coughs> That's what I recommend here. And yes, let people post a photo or a video. Things are so multimedia nowadays. People want to share that selfie that they took with your birthday cake. Let them, not just uh, little text messages. Uh, photo or video uh, is, is good advertising. And if they're sharing a photo that it puts you in a bad light, a bad video and, and showing you in a bad light, just don't allow it. You have the ability here to do so. So these other settings, you can check them out on your own. But that's one of the big ones I want to show you here because people often say, well, I don't want to get on Facebook because they're just going to trash me. You have the ability to control your message. What, what about the rule we're discussing the deleting uh, notifications before? It said you go through that quickly. 
Yeah, it did. It says right here, notification. And because I was looking at it, I don't know which ones to, if they, if they have it broken down into mobile and... Yeah, that's the annoying part of it. You have to go in and say, well, which one do I want to see or not? And there's a, a lot to look at. But at the top, there is this one up here where you can get a digest. Uh, so you kind of get things condensed into one update instead of every time there's an update or turn it off. I sort of feel um, for most of these email things right here, you know, I, I don't want emails. I'll just log into Facebook and I'll look at the number here. So just browse it a little bit, and it's perfectly fine to get most of these to off. I don't want a message about this. I don't want a text message. I don't want an email. And then you would have to kind of go manually for these ones. If you turn it off on the top one, does it turn everything off? It does for Facebook because um, it's grouped in this section. You see, all of this is related to Facebook. So this is saying, when I'm logged into Facebook, alert me for all of these on or off. Then you've got a little section on messages and a little section on email right here. So on the email, it's got its own little option. So again here, too much activity. You can turn it off. You can turn them off and see how you like how it works. And if it was too restrictive, you can go back and change them a little bit. All right, so um, we'll take one more break, and then we'll um, talk about creating content, and specifically also boosted content and such in a moment. Question? Did you go to page to get to settings? <coughs> yes, you, you have to be on the page in question. So yeah, you, you click on the triangle, you go to the page, and then you can go to settings. All right, so it's about 11.50, we'll take a break until 12, and then we'll go on.